There's a call going up across the land in every nation. A call to those who swear allegiance to the cross of Christ. A call to true humility to live our lives responsibly, to deepen our devotion to the cross of any pride. In a hostile foreign land, the message we are proclaiming is repentance and forgiveness, the offer of salvation to a dying race of man. To love the Lord our God is the heartbeat of a mission. Overflow across the streets or around the world. The mission still the same. Proclaim and live the truth in Jesus' name. To love the Lord our God is the heartbeat of a mission. A spring for which a service overflow across the streets all around the world. The mission still the same. Proclaim and live the truth in Jesus' name. Proclaim and live the truth in Jesus' name. Blessed our prayer when our hearts slowly bend and we gather to Jesus, our Savior and friend. Loving, compassionate Father, we, your children, do approach your mercy seat this evening to give thanks, to praise and to adore your matchless name. Father, we thank you for this great privilege that you have given unto us to come into your courts to hear the word dropping of salvation once more. We pray tonight, Lord, for your man servant whom you have chosen to put out the word of truth, to bring souls to repentance. And we pray, dear Lord, that as the message go forth, that someone will yield to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pray for this community that you'll water his soul, Lord. Help that someone will surrender before it's too late. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. 
We pray for those that are gathered here and for those on various platforms that are listening in and watching. We pray that you'll continue to bless, to save, to sanctify. We pray for a special anointing on your man's servant tonight as he come to put out the word of truth. Be with us all. Please forgive us of our sins and strengthen us. Give us receptive hearts to your truth as we humble tell you thanks. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Good night again, everyone. I want to say good night and welcome to our final call. Another night in our final call. I want to welcome you here. I want to welcome those on Facebook and those who on Zoom. All the platforms that we are streaming on. I want to welcome you to another night with our Power Pack, Bible Pack, Bible Back, Soul Storing Sermons from our illustrious pastor. Michael Lewis, we want to welcome you. We know that every night we come here, we have something to learn. It's not for us to come and to just sit down. We must come with our pens and our pencils so we can write down. There is always something for us to learn. We want to welcome you tonight again to another night. We know that there's a blessing in store for us tonight. And God is always here to us to give us a blessing. It's time for a fellowship song. Let us all stand. Stand and sing with us. Come and go with me into my father's house. To my father's house. Come and go. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Come and go with me. because allegory has to do with mythical creatures. Parables is with real life events. True or false, in the story of the rich man and Lazarus, Lazarus was resurrected. 
and that is Falls. In that story, it's Falls. True or false, the great gulf in Luke 16 verses 26 indicates an unchangeable decision at death. And that is true. Now, moving on to tonight's question. We're ready, right? Okay, great. So our first question is, which word is used more frequently in the book of Mark than any other books of the Bible? Is it A, immediately, B, therefore, or C, verily? Number two, according to the then Jewish customs, if a woman had an issue of blood, she should be put away for 17 days. Is that true or false? Number three, the woman with the issue of blood only got a little better after she visited the doctors. Is that true or is that false? Number four, the word crowd, you know, the word crowd in the New Testament is often used in a positive connotation, a negative connotation, or a neutral way. And finally, our last question, when we are about to make life-changing decisions, we should tell it to everyone we know, A, or B, post it on our WhatsApp status, or C, keep it between us and God. Please do have a blessed night, and the winners will be announced on Sunday. Good evening, everyone. Are we happy to be here tonight? Indeed. And so tonight, this is the time we'll be looking at um, the night's offering. And as usual, we're going to ask the ushers to please stand as we ask the Lord for his blessings. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Eternal God, truly, we are thankful to know that you are still the giver of good gifts. Tonight we have hearts, Lord, to receive your blessing. And Lord, also to give an offering to the furtherance of your cause. We are indeed happy to know that you have brought us through the day. And we are back into your courts tonight to hear the dropping of your words. So dear Lord, as we now collect the, the offering, the night's offering, we ask, Lord, for a special blessing for our lives and all We will now sing the windows of heaven are open. The windows of heaven are open and the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy.
Dying with Jesus by death, reckon mine. Living with Jesus, a new life divine. Looking to Jesus, the glory that shine. Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am thine. Moment by moment, I kept in his love. Moment by moment of life from above. Looking to Jesus, the glory the shine. Moment by moment, O oh Lord. feature will be titled charcoal now charcoal or charred wood is formed when wood is heated in the absence of air charcoal has the unique ability to absorb or remove poisonous gases drugs toxic chemicals infectious bacteria and viruses a good quality of charcoal can be made from coconut shells and any wood such as eucalyptus willow pine and oak Charcoal can be easily made at home. Cut the wood into a uniform size and remove the bark. Stack the wood tightly together in a hole in the ground and start a fire. After the wood begins to burn, cover it with earth or a piece of tin. If tin is used, pile earth on top of the tin. Leave a small vent or opening for admitting limited amounts of air in order to maintain a slow burning process over several days. After the burning process is completed, leave the charcoal inside the covered hole until it cools, as heated charcoal will burst into flames when exposed to air. Methods of use of charcoal. Overall, charcoal has no toxic effects. Use charcoal as much as needed and as often as it, as it is needed. Carefully stir one to two large spoons full or tablespoons of charcoal powder into a small amount of water. 
fill the glass with additional water. Charcoal is best taken between meals. If food is the cause of the ailment, take charcoal whenever it is needed. Charcoal can also be mixed with water and can be used as poultice. Caution. It is best not to put charcoal powder directly on the skin if the skin is cut or broken. Sometimes charcoal can give a tattooing effect if the skin is broken. Now, there are common uses of charcoal. It is used for treating poisoning or drug overdose, treating diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, in intestinal gas or bloating, eye and ear infections, skin and joint infections, bee sting and spider bites, snake bites, jaundice in newborn babies, liver and kidney disease, toothaches and gum infections. So these are the wonderful uses of charcoal. So if you have any problems, go to the natural charcoal. Thank you. And for more information, please go to the health director of the health department of the Civic Arts of the Church. Let us all stand for meditation song. Search no more.
you so much, praise the Lord. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the invitation to come to you tonight. We pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to speak to your people, to help us, Lord, to be witnesses, to help us like the three angels to be consistent, to carry this message to a dying world, to a dying community, a community that is destined for destruction. We pray for the Seaview Gardens community. We pray for every household. We pray for every occupant. We pray for every uh, member of the community. And we ask, Lord, that before time exchanges for eternity, that your people, for whom you gave your only begotten Son, would have completely surrendered their hearts to you and be citizens for your kingdom, a better world. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Are you happy to be here tonight? All right. Today, I hope you had a good day today. And we are here to praise the Lord and to lift him up. And let me remind you, welcome to those of you online. Thank you so much for joining and for staying with us, worshiping with us. Time is running fast. Tonight, we are on the brink, the cusp of ending week two. Time has flown by quickly. And next week, we begin our third week. Let me tell you something, friends of mine. That is why I say to you, the church, it takes nothing to commit to God for four weeks. I am saying to you, there was a time when we used to preach the word for six and eight weeks. We would sit under a tent and we would never get tired of hearing God's word. And so it's a joy and a privilege to be used by God to declare his word because the time is coming when we will not have the luxury of worshiping unmolested. And so today we have, uh, let me see the hands of those who are coming for the first time. You're coming for the first time. Okay, uh, very well. Uh, are you Mr. Reeves? Mr. Reeves, very good, very good. Good to have you, Sir Reeves. God bless you. And uh, I, I, I wish you were here before, but I have a gift that I'd like to give to you. I'm going to ask one of my team members to take this to Sir Reeves. Will you stand so that we can will you give him a round of applause, please? Thank you for coming. Who invited you? Who invited you? Who invited you? Who is that? Okay, Joy invited you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for accepting the invitation for being here. God bless you. Is there somebody else who is coming for the first time? Yes, you're coming for the first time? Okay, can you pull down the mask so I can see you clearly? All right, lovely smile. You see, when you pull down the, smart, the, the mask, all I saw was a smile. Who invited you? Who invited you? Oh, praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit invited you. Amen. Let's give her a gift. Let's give her a gift. Hope in the midst of chaos. God bless you. Put your hands together for her. Put your hands together for her. God is in the saving business. Let me tell you something. My Bible tells me that if we fail to praise God, sticks and stones will cry out. Amen. When we fail to do the work, God will lead his people. He will do the work all by himself. And so thank you, my sister, for coming. May the Lord bless you and keep coming. I hope you registered. Did you register and got one of these prayer fellowship cards? Wonderful. Wonderful. Is there anybody else coming for the first time? What about online? Let me check online to see if persons are coming for the first time online. Uh, usually we would have our online monitors, but I'm going to check now to see if we... Have anybody coming? What about YouTube? YouTube. Is there anybody coming on YouTube for the first time? Let me let me see. All righty. 
But we really want to thank you so much for being here with us. Really, really, really want to thank you. And we praise God. We know you're in for a blessing tonight. We know you're in for a blessing tonight. Let me check to see uh, if we have any guests. I'm seeing Chris King again. Welcome, uh, Chris King on Zoom. Uh, let me go through. Let me go through. I hope uh, some of these. Okay, I'm seeing some Olympic Way folks online. In Donnet. Good. Donnet from Canada. Thank you so much, Donnet, for being online with us. We are in for a treat tonight. God is going to be speaking to our hearts. Now, let me share something with you. Make sure you have your notebooks, your pencils, your pen, writing implements, because we're going to be taking a journey tonight in the word of God. All right. Thank you so much, Kadia. Thank you, Kadia. Gina is here from Canada. Welcome, Gina. Thank you so much for coming online and for worshiping with us. Uh, thank God for COVID. We can worship uh, everywhere around the world together, and we don't have to have a visa to be in church. So you're all the way in Canada, and you're worshiping right here in Jamaica. Thank God for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Tonight, brothers and sisters, we're going to have a word of prayer again because we're going to go into a very, very important subject, the final call, part two. The final call, part two. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, take charge of this evangelistic series. Take charge of the system. Take charge of my voice. Take charge of of the message tonight in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so our theme text, can we have the lights cut on this side, please, so we can have clarity with the uh, screen? Very good. Can you see the screen better now? Okay, our theme text comes to us from Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4, for whatsoever things were what? Written aforetime, they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Tonight we're going to be talking about the final call, part two. Now, the last time we were talking about this subject, can you shift the, the, the feed with my video? Uh, I don't know if you can put it to the top right hand corner because it's blocking the content on the screen. Uh, is that possible? It's not possible? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 to 12. That should be right there. Uh, the, the last time we met and we spoke about the final call, God has a final message, final warning message for the world. We understand from the last time we, we were here that God has a people in the last days that will be preaching the three-point last message for the world. Let me share something with you. God is going to be coming. His, his son is going to be coming. Jesus will return and put an end to all the madness that's going on down here. Our world is in a hostile situation. Our world is a crazy place today and God is going to put an end to Satan's influence in this world. And so he has given a final message that has three compartments, a final message with three warnings so that we will be ready for his return. I am praying, I'm praying that somebody will take God seriously. Many persons have failed to take God seriously and they are no more. But God has protected you. God has kept you alive so that you might listen to his message and make the right decision before. So the first angel's message says, John says, I saw, he was in vision. He says, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. The word angel, angelos, means messenger. He said the, mess the angel had the everlasting gospel. Everlasting gospel. Note that to preach 
to those that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, people. God is particular. He wants to make sure everywhere around the world gets the message before Jesus returned. In fact, when he returns, no human being will ever say, I did not hear. You will not have an excuse because the Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness and then the end will come. Matthew 24, 14. So John saw the church. We established that last time. Messengers, angelos, angels in Revelation. Let me remind you, Revelation is a symbolic book. It's not a book to be taken entirely literal. It's a book symbolic because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 2 that the angels sent and signified. Sorry, John, uh, Jesus sent and signified by his angel. The word signify in the text means to put it into symbols or signs that's what revelation 1 verse 2 says and then the bible says in verse 3 of revelation 1 blessed is the one who reads this book and those that hear the words of the prophecy in the book because the time is at hand and listen to me brothers and sisters we would be foolish we would be foolish for God to give us warning messages and we disregard the warnings and end up on the wrong side of the fence. So John was in vision and he saw three angels. The first one he saw flying in the midst of heaven. And this angel was speaking in a loud voice. He was speaking so that the entire world could, could hear. That's what John saw in his vision. Remember now, a vision is when you are awake, not when you're asleep. When you're sleeping, that's called a dream. When you are in vision, your eyes are open, but God brings to your mind sceneries so that you can understand his will for your life. So God gave John this vision and he saw angels flying in the middle of heaven and they were above the earth and they were preaching in a loud voice to the earth. And that is not to say that the time is coming when we will be seeing angels. What it is saying is that in the last days, God will have his messengers going around with rapidity, speaking and preaching the everlasting gospel. Now, let me pause here a little bit to explain to you what the everlasting gospel looked like. The everlasting gospel has three point message. Number one, the first angel says, we must fear God and give glory to him and worship him that made the heavens and the earth and the sea. In other words, to fear God and give glory means to worship him. In other words, God's message to the world, his first message is a warning to people to worship the true and living God. The text says, worship him that made the heaven, the earth and the sea. The God you worship must be the creator God. Psalm 100 and verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. How are you going to, what, what should you know about him? It is he who hath what? Made us and not we ourselves. We must recognize the God who makes us. That's true worship. Acknowledging the God who made us. Remembering the God who made us and worshiping him according to how he instructs us to worship. On this week, I spoke to you about the, the tale of two women. And I shared with you that God has, there are only two churches on the planet. We have several denominations, but there are only two churches. True church. The true church. And the false church. I shared with you in John chapter 10. Where Jesus says other sheep I have. Which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. The problem that God has with humanity. Is that humanity fail to put him first. Humanity fail to worship God. In the true sense. And the first message to the world. In the last days. Final call is for the planet. To remember a God who made them. I'm emphasizing that. But then there's a second angel. 
That's the first angel. The first message is to fear God. The second message is even more serious. By the way, I must just pause to tell you that all the three messages have to do with worship. All three messages from the three angels that John saw who were sent to warn the world before Jesus comes. The, the, the messages all have to do with who you pledge your allegiance to, who you put first place in your life. What is first place in your life will determine your destiny tonight. So the second angel, John, continued to look in his vision and he saw a second angel. Here's what the Bible says. And the second angel followed and said, what? Fallen, fallen is Babylon. By the way, what you're seeing on the screen is exactly how the original text puts it. Fallen, fallen is Babylon. And I'm going to quickly explain why it is not red. Babylon is fallen, but fallen, fallen is Babylon. There's a big difference in the scriptures. And I'm going to share that with you in a little bit. And the second angel followed and said, fallen, fallen is Babylon, the great, which made all the nations do what? Drink the maddening wine of her adulteries or fornication. Let me explain to you quickly because of time why it is in the original text, in the original Greek, it's fallen, fallen first and not Babylon is fallen. You see, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is translation in modern English. But in the original language, it's fallen, fallen is Babylon. You see, in the Greek language, the verb that is placed at the beginning is emphasizing the strength of the action. In other words, the message is not so much on Babylon. The message is on fallen. What's going to happen? In other words, fallen is Babylon. That's where the emphasis is. It's on fallen. Why? Because in John's time, the system, the religious power that existed when John got the vision, they were persecuting God's people and God was giving them a message that would make them feel good in spite of their persecution. And the message is, don't worry yourself, fallen is Babylon. We're going to spend some time on that because that is not as simple as you see it. That text you're looking on on the screen is not as simple as you see it. Verse 8 of Revelation chapter 14. I'm going to break that down for you tonight. Then another second, that's another translation, another second angel followed saying, she fell, she fell. This is a literal Greek translation of the text, Revelation 14 verse 8. She fell, she fell. Babylon the Great, who, who from the wine of the intense desire of fornication, she has given to all nations. Who is this Babylon? The second angel John saw in his vision, the first one says to the entire world, worship God. That's what you must do now. Why? Because the hour of his judgment is come. We spent some time looking at that, but we're going to look at it detail, in more detail because I have a topic coming up, your day in court. And we're going to spend some time looking at that. Judgment is going on now. There are some churches that are teaching that when God returns, when Jesus returns, that's the time he is that is going to spread a big table and they have a book and the book of remembrance and they are going to call the names and you answer present and listen to your verdict. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Judgment is going on now the greek text the, the verse 7 says for the hour of his judgment present tense has come when john was in vision and he saw the angels preaching in the last days he sees that their message is saying at the time when they are preaching judgment is going on and that's the reason why you must worship god now because when the judgment ends if you're not involved in it you are on the wrong side of the fence it's a warning that's why i call it the final call so who is this babylon the second angel was seen going around and just crying out crying out fallen fallen is babylon what on earth is he saying Let's take a look. 
Babylon emerged from the ancient city called what? Babel or Babel. It's first mentioned in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. Anybody remember the story of Babel? Right after the flood, the people who survived the flood, which was Noah's family, they were fruitful and they multiplied. And generations followed after them. But they remember that some years ago, their great, great, great grandfather Noah told them of a flood that, that swept the entire world and destroyed all mankind. So they decided, no flood coming back and catch us. Our, gen, our grandparents were not smart. So since we have more knowledge, we are going to erect a building that is so high, higher than the mountain that the flood reached up Mount Ararat, where the ark was seen sitting on top of that. We are going to make a city bigger than that. And so I need to pause here and to say something to somebody. Let me, let me just remind you that tonight. There is no that you can ever make that God does know. Can I, can, I, can I talk to you again in another way? David says, even if you make your bed in hell, God is there. If you take the wings of the morning and fly to the utmost part of the earth, uh, Psalm 139, David says, even there he will find you. Anything you think, yes, the pastor is not knowing it. The elder doesn't know it. Your parents don't know it. The police officer doesn't know it. Nobody in your neighbor doesn't know what's going on in your head. God knows. And for every thought, you shall have to give an account. For every plan you make, for every, every act you do, you shall have to give an account. So here are the people planning and thinking they were planning without God, without God's notice. Here's what God says. And the Lord said, and the Lord says, look, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do now will be impossible for them. Ah, that's God speaking. Come, let us go down. That's God speaking. By the way, the same us that made man in Genesis chapter 1. The same Elohim. Elohim is the plural for God. God is more than one being. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the three of them says, come, let's go down. And there we will do what? We will confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. Ah, so the Lord dispersed them from there over the, all the face of the earth and they left off building the city. So when a man says, pass me the armor, the next man heard, don't pass me the armor. And so they accomplished nothing. And the building couldn't go forward. You see, when you don't understand somebody's language, you can't communicate. Am I making sense? And so here's what the Bible says. Note this verse now, note this verse. Verse nine, therefore its name was called what? Why? Because there the Lord did what? Confuse the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. The truth is the word Babel is given, is given to the place because God confused the language. So the word Babel actually means confusion. In Akkadian, the word Babylon means gate of God. Gate of God. Bab means gate. And Elu, Babylon, it means God. So Babylon is gate of God. The point that I'm trying to make, and we're going to get there later on, Babylon is not just a political power. Babylon is a religious political power. We're trying to understand what the angel meant when the angel says, fall and fall in his Babylon. What is this message he's sending us? The word actually means confusion. 
Babel, it's interesting. It's the word used to describe the language of a baby before they can speak. Sister Williams. So you might see some people in the community take up the baby. Mm -hmm, you know, you want tea, don't? And all the babies say, da, 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 da. That's babble. It means confusion. No mother understands that. I don't care how, how many births you've given before. You cannot understand the baby's language before they can speak. It's called babble. So I smile every time I see them on the bus. Mm -hmm, you want breasts, don't you? Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Not at all. Not telling you that. You're making up something. That's Babel. Confusion. It's not clear. Babylon did not exist at the time when John wrote. I want you to listen to this. When John was in vision and he heard the angel says, fallen, fallen is Babylon. Babylon as a nation never existed. It was destroyed. It was in ruins. So clearly, if he's talking about Babylon, it could not have meant the original Babylon that existed because that was no more. And Babylon was never rebuilt. In fact, I have been showing you pictures on the screen. That's Babylon in ruins right here, right now, today, to the far right. And if you Google it, you will see Babylon is a downhill. Is they excavated out in the Middle East in Iraq. That's where Babylon originated. Out there in Iraq, that's where Babylon was. So it's no longer in existence. When John wrote, fallen, fallen is Babylon, that nation never existed. So what on earth was he saying? If it didn't exist, how will it be fallen? It means, therefore, that John was speaking prophecy. And it means, therefore, that the word Babylon meant something else in his message. Am I making sense? Babylon must not be taken to be a literal city. It must be taken to represent something that Babylon stood for. So we're going to see what that symbol is. So to understand the symbolism of Babylon, we have to look at how Babylon operated in the Old Testament. We have to look at how Bab the role that Babylon played in the scriptures. Because when John wrote, there was no New Testament. Follow me closely. When John wrote, there was only Old Testament. So all John knew about Babylon was what was written because John never ever saw Babylon. Ah. So we need to find out a little more about Babylon. In the Old Testament, follow me closely, Babylon stood for a symbol of any nation that opposed God. In the Old Testament, all the times when we see Babylon mentioned from when it was called Babel, it set out to oppose God. In Genesis, the people said, well, you know what? We don't want any flood to come. We, 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 want, to, we want to build a city that is towering in the heavens. In other words, we can live how we feel like living because if God chooses to send a flood again, we will be safe. Everything that is connected with Babylon is negative in the, in the Bible. And Babylon stood for anything or any people that oppose God and his instruction. So let's go a little deeper. In Isaiah 14, Isaiah chapter 14, the famous passage that deals with Lucifer and how you are fallen. Did you know that that was a, that was a, 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 a message that God gave Isaiah about the king of Babylon? It was not really talking about Lucifer. It was talking about the king. But it was likening the king to Lucifer. The same way Lucifer fell from heaven is the same way the king of Babylon will fall. So watch how he spoke of the king of Babylon. He says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The king of Babylon was described as Lucifer. You, how are you cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations? You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the re far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will make myself like the most high. Those were Lucifer's words when he was in heaven before he got kicked out. And the king of Babylon, after a while, was projecting himself as if he was bigger than God. 
And so God likened him to Lucifer. That's what Babylon stood for. Babylon represented a people, a system that sought to, to, to dethrone God, that sought to usurp God, that sought to overturn God's government. That's what Babylon symbolized. And the angel says that system has fallen. Fallen, fallen is that system. And the angel is giving all of us that message here today. The system that opposes God, the system that has a religious order that is different from what God has, the system that counters God will fall. In Daniel chapter 5, the Bible says there was a king called Belshazzar. The Bible says one night he decided to have an orgy party. Yes, man. The, the olden time weddy weddy. Or the modern day, what's that place on um, Constant Spring Road again? Taboo. Oh, you don't think the pastor know them? Yes, man, I know them. I see long line out the door. And there's a place like that in water, in, in, in Olympic Way too. Yes, not far from the church. Topless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, when I'm passing through the community, I have to keep my head straight. Don't crash. That's where our world has descended. Listen to me, friends of mine. He decided in Daniel chapter 5 to host one of those parties. And guess what? He got so, he got so filled with pride and pomp in Babylon, in Babylon, by the way, and he sent for God's consecrated vessels that were used by the priests in the temple and start to drink red stripe out of it. Disrespecting God. Start to drink Heineken. And boom and rum, yes. Thank you for that one. And around him, a lot of men smoking spliff. And they were high that night until God stepped down, the Bible says in Daniel 5. And God says, God, the, the king saw a hand suspending in space without a body. Just a hand. Start to write just in front of him, just like there's a writing on that. He's, he was sitting on his throne right there and he saw a hand just start writing in Babylon. Prescribing his judgment for the night. The verdict was set could not change it, could not overturn it. Brothers and sisters, listen to me tonight. God is issuing a final call to young men, young women, old men, old women, to come back to worshiping the true and living God, the one who made you. You did not make yourself. So the angel says that system, that falls system, will fall. It must fall. We're going to talk about it even more. So the second angel described Babylon as a female. Did you know that? Oh, yes. Here's what it says. The second angel followed, saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon. Because which made all the nations drink of the maddening wine of her. And anybody remembers recently we spoke about church people described as a female. Anybody remember that? Oh, yes. In the Bible, God's people are described as female. And so the devil, everything God sets up, the devil has a counterfeit. So he will have his own people too. And they are described as females likewise. And he carried me away in the spirit, John says. John 17, verse 3. We're talking about Babylon. Babylon is described as a female. Watch this. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemy blasphemous names having seven heads and ten horns verse four the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones she he was still in vision in chapter 17 and she had pearls having in her hand a golden cup full of, full of abominations of unclean spirit sorry unclean things of her immorality watch verse five and on her forehead, on her forehead, was written what? The words, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. Babylon is a mother. 
she has daughters and she is a harlot and her daughters are harlots too that's the symbol in the text so we're getting a little closer it's a religious system that functions as a harlot mm, we're gonna get a little deeper we're going to find out some more about Babylon. Babylon is also pictures of the prostitute. We just saw that a while ago. And, and notice what the prostitute did. The prostitute used wine to make men commit adultery and fornication. Let me tell you something. In Bible times, if a woman wants to trick you, she would drunk you. In the Bible. And a lot of women have done that in scripture. It happened to Lot. His daughters drunk him and slept with him. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was a practice in Bible times. When, when women want children, especially if their husbands die and they can't find anybody, because in Bible times, a man would not marry a woman who was already married or touched already. He wants a virgin. So the women who are not virgins, they usually, if their husbands die, they would have to resort to prostitution because no one wants them. And so usually, they would put on their covers, go out in the night, and they would deceive people. And of course, you read about Judah, his own daughter, tricked him and slept with him because her husband died and she couldn't find another one. That is the same imagery. Babylon, this false system, is going to cause the world to have an illicit relationship with her. In other words, it's going to cause the world to become unfaithful to God and have a relationship with her. And by the way, Babylon is going to be more popular than God's people. Oh, yes. Everybody is going to have a party with Babylon. Everybody is going to be in the dance with Babylon. But the angel says, Babylon is going to fall. This false system of worship must fall. Watch the text. Jeremiah 25 verse 15. It says, thus the Lord God of Israel said to, to me, Take from my hand this cup of the wine of wrath and make all the nations to whom I send it drink. I'll explain all of that in a little bit. Babylon was a golden cup. That's what Jeremiah says. Babylon was a golden cup in the hand of God and making all the earth drunken and nations drank her wine. Therefore, the nations went mad. Oh, yes, symbolisms in Revelation. I want you to note this on the screen. When a people reject God's message, listen to this. When a people reject God's message, you know what God does? He allows them to become drunk with Babylon's wine. When a people reject the everlasting gospel, God will move out of the way and allow you to follow your own ways with Babylon and you become drunk. And watch this. Wine in the Bible is a symbol of God's wrath. And when you become drunken with Babylon's wine or drunken with Babylon, you are going to face the wrath of God. So the angel sends a warning to planet Earth. Babylon promotes adultery. It promotes an illegal relationship. In other words, the relationship you should be having is a relationship with God. Babylon says, oh no, you don't need that. You just have a relationship with me. That's what Babylon is saying. Every single human being that God made, you are to have a relationship with God. But Babylon is saying, oh no, you don't need that. Just be in relationship with me. And by the way, Babylon is also religious. So it will resemble church. So you're going to feel it's all right because what Babylon is saying, you can still worship and still dance with the devil. That's what Babylon is saying. But God is saying, you have to put me first. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. I must be first. And it is I 
who live in you and not you in me. That's the everlasting gospel. But Babylon says, oh no. You know what, Bridget? I remember I was reading, I don't know if you remember the story of Egypt. With Egypt. You know what Pharaoh said to Moses? God said, release my people so they can worship me in the wilderness. Pharaoh says, you know what? They can worship God here. That's what he said. They can stay in Egypt and worship him here. God's message is leave Egypt and worship me out there. Pharaoh says, no, you can stay here and worship too. And guess what? Many people are falling for that. Because it looks like worship. And so I can enjoy Egypt while I'm worshiping. Not the case with God. God wants all your heart. And if he can't get all, he wants none at all. That's what he says. In the Bible, fornication. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Fornication. We're going to talk about that. In a Here's what the second angel says. Fallen, fallen is Babylon, which made all nations drink of the maddening wine of her adulteries. I noticed something in the Bible. And I'm going to share this with you tonight. There are two major sins in the Bible that God speaks more frequently of. The one he speaks most frequently of is idolatry. Having another God before him. He always warns against that. We as a people always have the tendency to go after our own gods. Forgetting that there is a God who gives us breath. And we want to do our own thing and go our own way. Watch this. That's idolatry. The second sin is adultery or fornication. It's spoken of outside of adultery. It's the most frequently used expression to describe waywardness. In the prophets of the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah always talk to God's people about them committing adultery. It's not literally sleeping with a woman, but they leave the relationship that they have with God and go after another relationship that's described in the Bible as adultery. Having another relationship outside of that with God. If you have another God as your God, the Bible calls that adultery. And that's what Babylon is causing the world to do. To have a relationship with another God. But well, listen to me, friends of mine, tonight. If you're not serving God, you are serving the devil. There is no third ground about that. There's no middle ground. You can't sit on the fence. You're either for God or against God. And the angel is saying, if you're not serving God, who you're serving, it's going to fall. And you're going to fall with it. And that's why there's a warning. There's a warning. The Greek word for adultery is called pornei. Porneia. Porneia, the word from which we get pornography. It's a Greek word. It, it means every kind of sexual sin. Bestiality, man and animal, man and man, woman and woman, man with woman and they're not married. Adultery, fornication, everything. Once it is sexual sin, it's called porneia. And it's a word that is used sometimes, it's translated immorality, sometimes translated adultery, fornication, but it literally means in Revelation unfaithfulness. When you're not faithful to God, the scripture calls that fornication or adultery. The truth is we were made to be faithful to God, and if we're not faithful to God, we're committing adultery. We belong to God. That's why the Bible says, God says, I am a jealous God. I don't like it when you're with the other one. I want you are mine. And the same way you are jealous when you have your spouse and she's even talking to somebody else. And she looked like she's too close. And you have a heartbeat in your head. The same way you feel like dying. God is jealous when you go away from him and serve another God. And the angel, the second message, is calling back planet Earth to be faithful to the God who made you. 
That's the second angel message. Babylon, who encourages unfaithfulness, who encourages false worship, who encourages illicit relationship, is going to fall. God wants us to worship him who is creator. Babylon, with her traditions of false, would want us to worship the devil. And let me tell you something. You know how Babylon operates? We're not going to put up a sign that says, this is devil worship. No. They're going to even call the name of God. And that is why the Bible says, not all who say, Lord, Lord, shall enter, but the one who does the will. As you live your life, brothers and sisters, you must find out the will of God. You must make sure that you are living according to God's will and you're not living according to your own roadmap. Make sure that your life is aligning with God's template for you or else you're on the wrong road. God's message is, is a call. is called the everlasting gospel while Babylon's message is called wine. One drunks you, one keeps you living. Everlasting. But Babylon will collapse. Second angel followed them and saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon. Babylon is going to fall. And not only that, I'm going to wrap up with this. I think I'm close to my ending slides. Babylon is going to be falling. It's going to fall. But notice how John wrote it. He wrote it. It's a future event, but he used past tense. Hmm. Yeah, if you do English language, you're not going to be able to figure that out. If that's all you know, you won't figure that out. Let me tell you something. In the biblical language, in the Greek language, there is a tense called the prophetic perfect. It's not in English. It means that you can speak of a future event in past tense. When that happens in the Bible, it speaks to the certainty of the thing happening. It means that you can't question it. It must happen. John speaks of it as if it happened already because it must happen. It's called the prophetic perfect. Fallen, fallen is Babylon. It's a fact. It must fall. And brothers and sisters, as I close tonight, I want you to understand that whether you believe it or not, you can't change it. It is going to happen. When the tense is used, it speaks of the certainty of the event happening. So it is spoken of as though it happened already because it is sure to take place. God's words are sure to come to pass. Beware of Babylon. Beware of Babylon. Each man, each woman, each boy, each girl seated before me need to examine himself. Where are you today? To whom are you pledging your allegiance? Who occupies first place in your life? Whose rule book are you leaving your life according to? Is it God's book or is it another book? Babylon the Falls religious system will fall. Must fall. And here is the message tonight. Revelation 18, verse 4 and 5. John was in vision. After he saw the Babylon sitting, the woman who is a harlot, and she has many daughters who are harlots too. The false religious system has daughters. She has many other little churches around. Because church in the Bible is described as a female. So this religious system that John saw that will fall, it has multiple followers all over the world. And the angel, John saw an angel in Revelation 18, right after he saw the woman, right after he saw Babylon in chapter 17, in chapter 18, he saw an angel. And he noticed the angel was moving urgently and moving seriously. This is what the angel said. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, come out of her. My people, lest you take part in our sins, lest you share in our plagues. The final call is to leave Babylon. I'm sure you know that song, Leave Babylon. That's where it's coming from. That's where it's coming from. Leave Babylon and 
and come. That's where it's coming from. The angel, John saw an angel moving fast, moving fast, going around the world and just giving the come out of her. Don't shear in her destruction that's coming. Leave her alone. That false system that seeks to replace God. Hmm? For her sins are heaped high as heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Tonight, brothers and sisters, where is your allegiance? Whose rule book are you living your life according to? The second angel John saw in his vision says Babylon will fail. Babylon represents any religious system that doesn't follow the will of God. And let me say something to you tonight, brothers and sisters and friends. Those of you watching online, the same way you don't go into the supermarket and close your eyes and just pick anything off the shelf. It's the same way you don't just close your eyes and pick a church. You have to examine everything you hear. Because the Bible says, in the last days, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Revelation 13 tells us about these false prophets. Tonight, we have been looking at Revelation 40. We looked at the first angel's message, calling you to go come back to worship God. We see the second angel's message saying, leave Babylon and come out. Babylon is a system of worship that opposes God's way of worship. If it's not according to what God says, it's Babylon. You might grow up and see it. You might born come see it. And this is what my great mother, grandmother used to do. And this is what my great grandfather used to do. And my mother used to do it. But the truth is, friends, you must examine your own decision and your own destiny. So tonight, I'm going to be praying for somebody. God has spoken. God has spoken. And tonight, he's making a second call. The first call is to come and worship the creator God. You were not made to live how you feel like living. You were made to glorify God. You were made to serve him. You were made to make him known. You were made to live for him. And tonight, you're here with us. And perhaps you recognize that you have been living according to your own plan. And you're not on God's plan. I want to pray for you tonight. 36 years ago, this same appeal was made. And I raised my hand in church. I told myself, I want to serve God. Because if it is he who made me, then I need to serve him. He gives me breath each morning. He gives me life. I need to serve him. I owe him my life. Is there somebody else saying, Pastor, pray for me? You're visiting with us today. Maybe you have not, you have not given your heart to the Lord. Maybe you never ever serve the Lord. Maybe you're a backslider. But you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to follow Jesus in the right way. Is there somebody like that? God bless you. God bless you. Is there somebody else? God bless you, my friend. God bless you. As a matter of fact, I see some fresh faces here today. And you came after I gave out my gifts. So I'm going to go for my gifts. And if you're coming for the first time, I want to give you a gift tonight. That young man who raised his hand a while ago, where are my ushers? Come, come and assist me here. You're coming for the first time. Just raise your hand. I'm giving you a gift. Giving you a gift. First time since we start this crusade series. Giving you a gift. Yes. Yes. Give them a gift. Thank you for coming. You're young people. You could have been on the street corner doing your own thing. But praise God, you took the courage to come. 
Yes, man, I have some more. Can you, wait, Sir Ian, can you get me some more, please? Sir Ian, get me some more of the gifts, please. Please, thank you. You're here tonight and you're visiting and you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I don't want to live my life outside of the plan that God has for me. I don't want to live my life like that. I want to live my life according to God's plan. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to pray for you tonight. Here is a pen. Here is a pen. I want to pray for you tonight. Placing a card in your hand because we want to keep you in prayer. We want to keep encouraging you. Let me tell you something. You know, I always say to young people, the majority is never always right. Moses sent out 12 spies. Hmm? 12. And 10 came back and says, we can't make it. Can't make it. Can't make it. And Israel suffered because they listened to the 10. Two says, we can make it, man. With God's help, we can make it. They ignore the advice of the two because them said the majority can't run. And the majority cost Israel, suffered defeat. The majority is never always right. And I learned that from my youth. And I praise God for what he's doing in my life. Will you stand with me? We're going to bring the meeting to a close. The final call part two. There's a part three. There is a part three. And let me give you a perspective before we pray. These three messages. John says he saw the angel, the church preaching these messages. And right after the messages were preached... Jesus came. Oh yes. In accordance with his prophecy in Matthew 24 and verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all world for the witness. And the end shall come. I'm glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brothers and sisters, I'm looking forward for Jesus to come. And it's not my mother, nor my father. But it's me, O oh Lord standing in the need of prayer bow your heads with me as we pray i want to pray for these individuals god bless you god bless you i'm waiting on i'm waiting on the card i'm waiting on some other cards I want to pray for you tonight you didn't come here by chance friend god wants you to get a message he wants you to get a message he wants your life to be on track with him and this is a time when he need you when you are young and filled with energy and can serve him and can be a tool for blessing in his hand. Thank you. Thank you. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Dear Jesus, tonight. We heard your word. We recognize that when you speak, it is bound to happen. Noah preached and told the people that there is going to be a flood. And only eight people were saved. The majority was never right. Sodom and Gomorrah, they got a warning message. Only Lot and his two daughters were spared. The majority was wrong again. And in the last days, John saw the people who were lost. And the Bible described them as numbered like the sand on the sea. Oh God, tonight inside Seabue Gardens, final call evangelistic series. Young men have written up the cards. Young ladies have written up cards. And oh God, you desire for them to have life and have it more abundantly. 
I pray, dear God, that as they write their names on cards, that you will write your names in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray that tonight, unknown to them, I remember, Lord, when I stepped inside the church like they did, I never imagined that some weeks later, some days later, that I would say yes to Jesus. I did not know that there was going to be a life-saving message, a final call coming to me to give my life to Jesus and to live for him. And here it is today, I am rejoicing because my life is changed and I am better Oh God, make them understand that it might not be a popular decision, but it's the best decision. Help them to understand that you have come to give them life and to give them more abundant life. And so, Lord, tonight, I pray your blessing over their lives for having come to sit and listen to your words. Lord, I pray that your words would have been clearly exposed to them that they would have understood your words and i pray oh god that they may even go back online and watch it on youtube and seek to understand even clearer what you seek to make them understand i pray god that you'll be with seaview gardens seventh day adventist church that you'll continue to help the saints to be faithful to put you first to fear god and give glory to him lord we pray that the prophecy of doom will not be our lot but we will have life and have abundant life in thee i pray for those who will be baptized on sabbath i pray oh god that you will bless them and the others who are contemplating baptism we pray oh god that they will make their calling and election sure we pray that you will continue to protect us continue to keep us when we leave this place tonight we ask for joining mercies bring us back on sabbath morning where we'll be worshiping you in spirit and in truth we humbly pray in jesus name let the church of god say amen amen god bless you thank you for coming tonight the message is come out of her my people and be not partakers of our plagues or our sins. May the Lord bless you. See you on Sabbath morning, where we will be here to worship you in spirit, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We pray God's blessing over your life. Come out early, bring a friend. Remember now that if you bring five guests, if you bring five guests, you will receive a Bible. I don't know if somebody brought five guests tonight. Uh, I don't know if somebody brought five guests tonight, but if 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 nobody brought five Harry, guests, Harry Messiah, Sister Messiah, you brought five. There five. Talk to me, five. And they amount to five. Okay, good, good. Well, I have a Bible for you. Please come for your Bible, and you can give it to whomsoever you choose. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for her. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. They came a little late, but that's not a problem. They came right on time. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Give it to whomsoever you choose to give. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening as the praise team will take us out. There's a call come ringing on the restless way. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls.